In this video, I will show you how to light your character renders, whole scenes, and we will also talk about ray tracing in Eevee. This tutorial might be helpful not only for beginners, but also for experienced designers. So now, let's get into the video. So yes, it may be a surprise for many of you, but there is a custom blender build with ray tracing in Eevee. Instead of screen space reflections, it has screen space ray tracing option. And no, it's not as good as Cycles. The light still will not bounce off a surface that you can't see and other EV disadvantages stay, but you will have beautiful reflections on your characters from other objects around them. The difference between normal EV and the custom build is not that big, but still looks better than in the normal version. Unfortunately, the latest version of this custom EV Blender build is 3.1, so you will not have some of the new features there, but it's not a big problem in our case with Fortnite art. To install this custom Blender build, download this Windows version, open the archive where you will see a folder, move that release folder to wherever you want on your PC and launch the Blender .exe file inside of it. That's it! Firstly, let's talk about the fundamentals of lighting. There are many different techniques, but I will show you the most basic and popular way to light your subject. This technique is called 3-point lighting. As its name says, it consists out of three lights. Main light, fill light, and rim light. This technique is often used in movies, art, product design, etc. Now when you know the basics, let's light the character without any environment. For example, a character that will be used for a YouTube thumbnail. I will begin by porting the character. I do it through Fortnite porting, which I have a video tutorial about, so make sure to watch it. There are some settings I prefer using that can make your renders look better. Firstly, let's select Taste's rig right here instead of the default rig. It's an AK rig that is much easier to use and can save you a lot of time. My next tutorial will be about posing characters using this rig. The next settings I recommend you to change is material settings. Set ambient occlusion to 0.2, cavity to 0.1, and the most important one, subsurface. Set its value to 0.03. Subsurface scattering, or SSS, is how light bounces inside of your object. Here's a good example of it. Now when you have all the settings and have exported the character, let's make some adjustments to the default Fortnite porting node setup. Click on the FB shader node group and press tab. It will open the group. Here disconnect the subsurface color from the principal BSDF and then take it and connect it to the group input. Now you can change the subsurface color to whatever color you want. Let's start making the lighting. I prefer using sun lamps for only character renders. There are a few advantages of using sun lamps in our case. Firstly, the position of it doesn't matter, only rotation matters. Secondly, if you have multiple objects in one file, lighting will affect all of them and you won't need to copy your light setup every time you port a character. This is very useful for thumbnail renders. I have files with multiple characters in one file which saves me a lot of time. So now, let's add our first light. It will be our main light. So press Shift A and add a sun. In the properties, set the strength to something around 9, 10, and then make the color a bit orangish. Rotate the light 45 degrees around X axis and minus 45 around the Y axis. Don't forget to enable contact shadows for every light in your scene. This is very important. Now let's add our rim light. Just copy your main light, change the rotation so it looks somewhat like this, and set the strength to 10. Also change the color to any rim light color you want. I prefer using light blue. Also, I usually have two rim lights, just so I have this little outline all around my character. And finally, for the fill light, also copy the main light, rotate it so it looks approximately like this, and decrease the intensity to about 2. Just whatever looks better. Now you should have a beautiful lit character in your scene. One more thing I like doing is adjusting my environment color and strength to make the shadows look a little bit more bluish. Now let's talk about lighting whole scenes. It's much more complicated than lighting a single character because you need to make sure that your character fits into your scene but at the same time doesn't blend with the environment. You also need to keep in mind that all lamps, windows, and other glowing elements in your environment should affect your character's lighting. There is no exact formula of lighting your characters in complicated scenes, 
but there are still some basic rules we talked about earlier that you should follow. I will show you my project files of these renders and talk about how I lighted the scenes. Okay, so glad to see you here on this live commentary part. This is probably one of the most interesting parts of this video. So here we'll talk about how I was lighting all my creator renders, or just a few of them. So here in this one, as we can see right here, uh, the principle of making lighting in scenes is kind of the same as in just renders. You have a rim light, a main light, and a fill light. Uh, so as a main light for the environment and the characters as well, I had a sun lamp right here with an intensity of 4, contact shadows enabled of course, and I had an HDRI for background, this HDRI. Uh, I leave the link to this HDRI in the description, it was made by Benderaka, make sure to follow him. He did a really good job making this. So. Uh, this is the additional light to the main light to make this part of the face even brighter so it doesn't look that flat so this side is a bit darker than this one uh, then we had this light with intensity of 30 with contact shadows enabled as well uh, this additional light to have some more um, light on the crown here uh, as you can see here Without this light, it just gives a little bit of light right here. And this rim light to have some outline on this part of the character right here on the render, you can see it as well. So um, that's mainly it. I had no lighting for the background character this time. And <coughs> that's it for this render. Now let's go on to the next one. So this is a render I made for Kellogg's map. Uh, it was my first and for now my only render for a brand. So yeah, you can see some purple textures here because it was quite a long time ago and I've deleted some textures. So uh, yeah, I also had a sun lamp right here for the main light in the scene with it intensity of 6, a bit orangish color, contact shadows enabled of course, and here for the world node setup I had the same uh, HDRI uh, with a strength of 1 and also a principled volume connected to volume to make this volumetric fog in the background uh, to separate the characters from the background of course. And for the lighting um, I also had, th this was my main light, but I also had some additional lights right here. Whoops. It's a bit laggy because the scene is huge. So I had this light with an intensity of 3, contact shadows enabled, for the main light to make the character look a bit more 3D, to have this part of the face brighter than the other one um, and these two lights with the intensity of 42 and 30 with a bit different colors for the rim lights here and here uh, for other characters in the background I didn't have any additional main light but I also had rim lights for them and for this one the same story here two rim lights and nothing else I think I had yeah, I had some lights here uh, to make it look like the sun rays are coming through the leaves. Uh, let's see how it looks in the render, right here. You can see just a little bit light coming on this rock and a little bit on the leaves right here. Uh, this is coming from these lights as well. If you're wondering how I ported this whole map, it was a huge map. Uh, I used uh, UMAP for this uh, and I just ported the whole map, set up the camera, deleted parts that I didn't need and that's it. That's how I made the render. Let's go on to the last render. So this is a render I made for a map for a Cyber City callout and I also ported this map with uh, UMAP, added some buildings in the background, 
uh, to fill the overall composition. Also added some decorations like these LED hologram wallpapers. No, not wallpapers. Um, banners. So also here, how we did the lighting. Uh, it was a bit more complicated than normal scenes. Yeah, as you can see, I had this one as a rim light to have, as we can see here on the render, we have this blue rim light coming from all these blue lights right here. Uh, and the rim light helps us separate the character from the background. Like here, you can see it. I had a light here to have to imitate this uh, also rim light right here coming from all the blue lights here and I had an orange light here also as a rim light uh, as you can see I have orange light here a bit here on the face and here uh, that is coming from this door as you can see and when you have these dark environments with a lot of glowing objects I recommend you to imitate all the lights coming from them using uh, just area and point lights and spotlights and all types of lights. So I have this fill light that doesn't do a lot of a job here, but you can see it changes, makes it a bit purplish, just helps the overall composition a little bit. And I have this huge, also a little fill light. Uh, that doesn't do a lot, a very weak one, but it just adds some light here. And uh, I have one more light right here that makes the rim light at the bottom of the character here. And that's mainly it. Uh, for the environment, I had a background, no HDRI, I only had a background color here. Here's the color code if you need it. A strength of 1.5 and a principled volume as well to help the to help the characters stand out from the background a bit more. Um, this color, a uh, density of 0 0.002, and uh, because I have volume metrics here, as you can see, some light uh, coming from this door is spreading like this. And that looks pretty good. I had an area light here, as you can see that's just an empty building with an area light. Uh, it adds a lot of life to the render by the way. So as we can see here, when I disable it, it changes so much here in the final render. Uh, also for objects like lamps here, street lamps, uh, as you can see here I added a bit stronger uh, cube with volume, here you can see. A density of a bit increased density than the overall one so we can see this light spreading inside of it um, so here's the light a uh, huge intensity just so it spread it well inside of it uh, and also here for this statue I also had a box with volume whoops uh, and if you spotlights to help light the statue. You can't really see it in the final render right here, but still it looks pretty good. I like it. I think, yeah, I had another cube volume to help the light spread a little bit more. So yeah, that's it for this render. If you have any questions about these renders, uh, ask me on Discord, on YouTube in the comments below this video and learn. I hope you learned something new from my project files and will use it in your own artwork. You can join my Discord server where I have an awesome community of artists that you can share your knowledge with and help each other. Congratulations on finishing watching this tutorial! If you want to get a Lightroom from this video and a few other Lightrooms, make sure to visit my Payhip where I'll be selling a whole pack of different Lightrooms for a pretty good price. During the first 24 hours after this video comes out, this pack will be on a sale with a 50% discount. Also make sure to follow my Twitter where I'll post some discount coupons from time to time. Now when you know how to make a render, you can watch my video about how to make a thumbnail with a render you just made. 
see you guys there.